by three shutouts by Christy Mathewson in the 1905 World Series. And screwballer Carl Hubble striking out five straight future Hall of Famers in one All-Star game. And a record back-to-back no-hitters tossed by the Reds' Johnny Vandermeer. But no story was as big as this. Red Sox to root the Yankees, Sox dump to Babe, read all about it. The season after leaving Boston, Babe Ruth would hit 54 homers for his new team, the New York Yankees. We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. England declares war on Germany. 1939. As a fragile peace falls apart in Europe, the pride of the Yankees dynasty has become prematurely frail. But his power and poise are present, and the words echo still. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Summer of 41. Jolton Joe's astounding hitting streak reaches 56. And Ted Williams, the last to finish the season batting over 400. Ted finishes the doubleheader 6 for 8, batting 406. Not too bad of it. He is 28 years old, the chosen one. On April 15, 1947, on a gray Brooklyn afternoon, Jackie Robinson crosses the foul line at first onto the green diamond wearing the uniform of the National League Dodgers. And as he crosses that line and takes the field, he changes profoundly, not just the sport, but a nation. Ladies and gentlemen, the grandson of the late Jackie Robinson, Jesse Sims. Four years later, Robinson and his Dodgers are on the wrong side of a miracle. It's October 3rd, 1951. It's 1954. We're rocking to a whole new sound. World Series, game one. Eighth inning, Indians and Giants tied at two. There's a long drive, play back in the play back, back in the Sonny Mays just brought this crowd to its feet for the catch, which must have been an optical illusion to a lot of people. Ladies and gentlemen, the Say Hey Kid, Willie May! As a young president was setting a bold agenda, a Yankee was reaching to do the babe one better. There was agony and an asterisk for Roger Maris. But in the end, a moment of ecstasy. As our universe got smaller, the diamond was expanding. In 1971, Satchel Paige became the first player elected as a Negro Leaguer into the Hall of Fame. And one year later, 
Puerto Rican legend Roberto Clemente, one of the leaders of the Latin Revolution, would reach the magic mark of 3,000 hits on what would be his final at bat. You could say the ball started its historic flight right here in Milwaukee in 1954. It would continue for the next 20 years, landing a thousand miles away in Fulton County on a sultry Georgia night, April 8, 1974. Fastball is a high. will continue to fall. Rose out hits Cobb. That's number 4,192. He's going. Henderson out steals Brock. He's got it. Arlington, Texas, May 1st, 1991. Nolan Ryan is one strike away from no hitter number seven. The entire stadium standing in anticipation of the final strike for the final out. Baltimore, September 6, 1995. Cal Ripken Jr. had come to work 2,131 times without a day off. And after passing Garrick's astounding mark for durability, Ripken's ovation roared for 22 minutes and 15 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, future Hall of Famer, Cal Ripken Jr.
after more than a century of seasons, baseball would have a season of the century. Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire chasing the romantic mark of Maris in the summer of 1998. On September 8th, McGuire got there first. Number 62, and as fate would have it, Sosa was there to applaud. In 2001, a rookie phenom from a distant shore arrived like a tsunami and led Seattle to a season not seen in a century. Also in 2001, we'd witnessed the greatest slugging display in Major League Baseball history. Finally, again and again, so many of our seasons have been defined by October, the month when Don Larson reached World Series perfection. And Jack Morris shut down the Braves for 10 innings in Game 7. Also be the coolest year. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets with it. And we know if you want immortality on this diamond, you knock it out of the park in October when it counts the most. Bill Mazeroski did with that cataclysmic walk-off homer to win the 1960 World Series. And Carlton Fisk with his Game 6 dance of joy. Three consecutive home runs in 1977 made him Mr. October for the ages. And in 1988, a howling Kirk Gibson defied all reason. And in 1993, Toronto's Joe Carter would reward Canada with back-to-back -back World Series titles. Ladies and gentlemen, five October legends. Bill Mazeroski, Paul Fisk, Reggie Jackson, Kurt Gibson, and Joe Carter.
we have a very tragic alert for you right now. An incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center here at the... Uh, and then, last season, in the aftermath of that inexplicable September morning, baseball was what we needed it to be, a refuge. And the fall classic was just that. And how marvelously it ended. Bases loaded, the Yankees with their supreme clothes around the mound, the D-backs with their best hitter at the plate. At its best, the game is a return to innocence, allowing us to see, if only for a moment, the world as a child does. A world where the improbable is always possible. Baseball truly belongs to this nation of dreamers, a nation that still awaits wonders around every corner and with every pitch.